Hello everyone, Gilly here. Uh, today I've been working a lot on some examples for my presentation that's upcoming called Refactoring Refactored with a RAM Dub. I've given two kind of interesting examples, but this third one I feel is really the sweet spot. Um, this one, I'm going to be showing off lenses, which Ramda gives you. Um, they're kind of a popular functional programming concept at the moment. So, the actual data that I want to operate over, I, I got this data from the Pokemon API. Um, Pokemon are really popular right now. If you're a future de dweller and you don't know what Pokemon are, uh, get off your Razor scooter and bring out your history discs to learn about Pokemon, because they're pretty interesting, I suppose. Um, this is some data from the Pokemon API. I got back the Bulbasaur Pokemon. But the idea that's really interesting about this data is that it's pretty structured, it's pretty nested. Um, just for the fun of it, I'm gonna say, what we wanna do is we wanna operate over the species object. Let's say for some reason, we're trying to build a system where our domain is very focused around the species part of the Pokemon. So we might have a couple of functions that, and let's say also just for the sake of argument, we're interested in immutability to some degree. Um, we might have a couple of functions that operate on that species. So maybe you can set the species name. That's what this first function here does. So you can give it the name of the species that you want to change it to. You can give it an old Pokemon, the one you want to change, of course, immutable, immutably. Um, and then what it's going to do is it's going to do a shallow clone of the Pokemon, and it's going to do a shallow clone of the species. It's going to change the name to the new name you gave it, change the species to that newly named species, and then return the new Pokemon. Now, if you're not sold on the benefits of immutability, um, this may not make a lot of sense to you why all this cloning. Um, I would recommend watching a couple videos on it, maybe getting educated and seeing for yourself whether or not you think that it's a valuable thing. It's probably not something you want always. Well, it's definitely not something you want always. If you have some kind of memory constraints, it's a little more expensive. Um, but let's just say for the sake of this example, you're refactoring code from someone who was sold on immutability. And you'll notice here that I'm using shallow clone. Shallow clone is risky. It doesn't give you full immutability in that nested objects and nested arrays and nested references point back to the original, but the top level uh, is changed. If you don't understand that, that's fine. I'd look up a doc, some docs on it. If you look at um, like Lodash's docs or Underscore's docs, you can probably learn more about cloning. But I implemented Shallow Clone because it's, I believe, more like what you're gonna see in the wild. Um, when people are just lazily going and doing these things. Cloning made this solution a lot easier without Ramda, so I felt it necessary. Otherwise, I had these huge object structures that I had to copy over, so I did go far, go to the length of doing that. So, um, add species metadata is the second thing that's core to our business um, we'd like to do on Pokemon, where you can give it an object containing some metadata uh, and a Pokemon. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna clone off the Pokemon, the metadata again. It's gonna set the cloned species to the clone Pokemon, because again, this is a shallow clone. This isn't a deep clone, so you have to do these little uh, state twists and turns, gymnastics everywhere. And then it's gonna loop through all of the keys in the metadata, and it's just gonna set the new Pokemon species metadata to the metadata's key. And then it'll return the new Pokemon. So this feels a little bit like beating around the bush. And I think it is, honestly. If you want immutability, um, a library like Ramda or some other ones can help you a lot. Um, and to be fair, this shallow clone, a lot of times you'll import this to the library. And Ramda actually has clones in it. But I'm not going to use clones for this example. I'm going to be using lenses, which are way cooler than clones. And then the third function we have here is just this get species function. And get species is really short and sweet. We're just gonna reach into the Pokemon, reach into the species, get the name back. Um, if you remember from the example, that's what it looks like. So here's the species name is, in this example, Bulbasaur. That's pretty simple. And of course, I had to implement this good old shallow clone, which is just, it makes a new object, loops through your original object's keys, and then, uh, replays them on top of your new object and returns the result. So this is not 
awesome. It's not uber elegant. Um, let's run some tests and the important thing about these tests is they test a lot of the mutability properties of these objects as well. Not only do they test the behaviors, so we're going to prove through the tests, and if you don't believe me, you can look at them on GitHub. Um, we're going to prove that immutability holds still in Ramda. So I'm going to jump right in in this example, and I'm going to bring in Ramda. Ram these things are just so natural in Ramda. Um, and then I'm going to do... Let's see, I'm gonna build a couple of lenses now. So I'm gonna build a lens for species. Um, and that's just gonna be an r.lens prop on species. And then I'm gonna build a lens for name. So name lens is just gonna be a prop on name. And here's something uber, uber cool and uber, uber powerful. Now I'm gonna build a species name lens which knows how to look down species.name. So to do that, all I have to do is compose my species lens and my name lens. And that's it. And of course, compose takes any number of arguments. If I wanted to go deeper, I could put another lens here, another lens here, another lens here, etc. Now this, in my mind, is just wicked awesome. I can take these lenses and compose them kind of arbitrarily, honestly. Um, I think one thing that I do think is weird is the order of the lenses here. If you know the compose operator, it usually means apply this and then apply this. I, I'm not sure why in Ramda they're organized this way. All I know is that this is what works, so I'll use it. Um, anyway, so let's start with set species. Um, I'm just gonna go right for it because there's not really, since immutability and lenses are first class in Ramda, the, a lot of the work that this function was doing will just go away. So I'm going to use r.set, which is a function that takes a lens, it takes a value, and it takes an object. And what it does is it focuses in on that lens and it just sets the value inside of the given object. So that's confusing. Let's look at that. Um, basically we want the species name lens, so dot species dot name, and we want to set that to species, whatever you pass me in the function. And of course our object is just the Pokemon object. And now I can just delete all of this. Now let's make sure the tests still pass. And they do, that's cool. Um, but that's just kind of wicked awesome in my opinion. We just deleted a bunch of ad hoc immutability and replaced it with something kind of neat, kind of actually truly reusable. So let's try add species metadata now. This one's a little bit harder, but we can still use our lens. We just have to use what's called the over function. So that takes your lens as the first argument. And for this one, we just want to use species lens because I don't know if I explained this well enough or not, but the add species metadata kind of just merges data into the species object. So we're going to do that and then, oh wow, it turns out what we need to do is some kind of a function. And what we really need to do is just merge metadata. Um, and then the last thing is the actual object you want to operate over, which is Pokemon. Now, if you don't understand why I can do this, I can do this because of a thing called currying which I've mentioned in past videos. I would look up currying, I think it's really sweet. Basically the idea is that this function right here is not fully applied. I gave it metadata and now it's waiting for another value. And then when it gets that other value, it's as if you had called it. So it's almost as if when you call this, it's gonna call it uh, with whatever the lens gives you back. So you know, Pokemon dot, um, dot species dot name but the cool thing is this over property lets us do all of that inside of the lens not inside of the root um let's uh delete some of this code and run this to make sure it still passes and it does wonderful um and then last but not least let's refactor get species um to refactor get species we're just going to use the final lens method and this one's kind of cool too it's called view so we're gonna use our species name lens this time, and we're just gonna ask, what does this look like on Pokemon? And that should be all we need. Okay, so that worked. Now I can delete this shallow clone function, which doesn't need to hang around. And now all of my code 
easily fits on one screen. These things, these lenses are very reusable in that I was able to reuse them here, here, and here. I was able to compose them. I think this is just wicked awesome. Of course, none of these videos would be complete without me going through and uh, kind of getting rid of some of the functions too and just making it so that Ramda builds those functions for me. So this set species can become species name lens, a set of species name lens. Uh, oops, that should be that. Let's make sure it still works. Yep. Um, this one right here, because of the way that merge is being called on the inside, it would be a little bit harder to get rid of the function here. So I'm not gonna worry about that. But get species is a piece of cake. We're gonna do an r.view where species name lens is the first argument. Um, let's run that. As you can see now, it's just short and absolutely sweet very to the point setting a species is setting at the lens v uh, getting a species is viewing at the lens adding metadata is at the lens merging in metadata this is in my opinion one of the coolest features that randa provides uh, and it's truly general you know these lenses are not in any way specific to pokemon they're only specific to things that apply so this lens is specific to anything that has a name, really. Um, if you notice the root level Pokemon here has a name too. I, I don't know, it matches up. I'm not exactly sure what the significance of that is, but it's kind of sweet. This is just a general, general thing. And it's treating kind of like in Lisp, whenever they talk about how your functions are data, here they're saying, you know, let's treat our paths into our objects like data and let's operate over them as if they were data. Well, this concludes the third and final example for my upcoming talk, Refactoring Refactor with Ramda. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.